as 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 uh, DJ Alicia was saying, you you got you got to realize the reality. Hold on, I'm going to have to do this another way and sort of uh, sort out things or little things that you had set up. Press it a bit more than like how you left it and went on out to your tour or you went on out to uh, tend other things. You're tending your your Facebook page more or your podcast more and making it uh, the main hub now. It, it is. Club in your living room <laughs> with, <laughs> with Kim Mazzell and DJ yeah. Alicia. Oh, so, there's a moth on my, a dead moth. <laughs> As they say, this is live, and, and those things happen, and we are. I've got that light on. It's like, get them. Yeah, they, they are very much attracted to the light. <laughs> Step into the light. What was that movie uh, Poltergeist? I think. Where, well, uh, let's ooh, let's go away from that. But uh, yeah, away from the light. But yeah, the moth was like. I saw him appearing as we went on live. I was like, okay, that little fella's gonna give me a little bit of trouble, but that's okay. <laughs> Since it's live, we'll just add it as a little bit of a little extra entertainment. That's right. I, that was an uninvited guest to the show. We don't want any more uh, people on me. The window's open though. And a little, little note for yeah. you guys in America. In the UK, and it's the craziest thing, our windows don't have screens. Not at all. Huh? Not at all. So when your window is like open, it's open. So wow. um, I'm going to come back to that, park that for a minute. And I want to ask uh, DJ Alicia, are you um, going into any venues or are you doing everything from uh, your home? I've gone into a couple of venues, but the, the venues that I go into, there's no audience. Like I did Lay Nocturne and, you know, yeah. like Carol there and the studio producers and that kind of thing. But no, uh, but I did just come from Detroit and we did an event there. Um, Bruce Bailey in Detroit had me come down there and they got a baseball field. So the people were socially distanced in the baseball field. I'm, it was amazing. It was, it was amazing. Kind of dope, huh? Yeah, the DJs was were off to the side and everybody had like their blankets, you know, and their own cluster of friends or family, whatever. Uh it was open bar. It was it was amazing. Nice. Interesting. Know, right? so it the, was really nice. The innovation continues and um and it's great that you are able to be a part of it. And Lori Branch, our co host, has joined us back again. Welcome back. Thank you. Ghost in the machine again. Sorry about that. Yeah. Me too. Just me too, me out. But I'm back. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Our Facebook uh, live stream had a little ghost as well, but we're uh, in full effect now from everyone across the country to across the pond. They're tuned in with us on the Vintage House Facebook page and on YouTube and on Twitch. So we are uh, happy that you all are with us for what again i'm incredibly excited as i'm sure you are lori to have these um two essential uh contributors to house music yeah yeah i'm excited kevin for for a couple of reasons I, you know okay let's just call it what it is and maybe i missed this the first five minutes but come on people come on black women what's up have you ever felt more proud? <laughs> oh yeah i walked out of my house i was like I'm just telling myself, what's up, what's up, everybody? I was like that today. No matter what happens, we have won. No matter what happens. That's right. We already won. That is absolutely. We in that stratosphere, what's up? Yes, it's true, it's true. How you so, guys feeling about the, uh, how you feeling about Kamala? So, see how I feel. Right. So thank you so much for that, because I've had a couple of disagreements online today because I could not believe <laughs> some of the comments that I was seeing on Facebook. And I really, really tried to maintain, but I, I had to say something and I got into a couple of little tiffs with people. In I regard know. 
I, I, you know, I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. It don't get no better than this, people. What are you talking I about? Mean, it's the, uh, what, I mean, really? Like, yeah. we shouldn't even have to have this discussion. I don't even yeah. know why we're having the, 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 I don't know why the debate is even there. Like, what do you, right. what do you, you know, it was, it was a little disheartening, but I had to refocus my attention uh, to the positive side of it. Let me tell you why the debate is there, DJ Alicia and Kim. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this too. The debate is there for one simple reason. It's called misogyny. Misogyny. Okay. 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 There you go. People, this is the same reason Hillary Clinton wasn't elected president because there was enough people out there, men and women, who didn't think a woman should be in that role. And this is very befitting for the music industry because we see the same kind of misogyny happening exactly where we are. Which is why it's ultra important to have, this should be the regular flow of the show and we have an opportunity to make a difference. And while we tell stories, it's important to do that here on Bill Chow Show, but it's also an opportunity to make an impact and, and to impress upon our audience and those who uh, may view us later on, right? right. That right. We, are, we are all valuable in the contributions that we make. I live in a house with all, I'm all women, including my- Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know about that. <laughs> even, I do too. The only boy in my house is one cat out of like six uh, entities. Yep. So, so he gets a hard time. <laughs> and so we, you know, again, I honor and respect uh, all of you, certainly the women in my home and um, I, the contributions. I look at your, your talent, your creativity. Uh, your beauty, all that is encompassed in that. Um, and it just, it warms my heart. And again, um, I'm honored to be the guy in the room tonight. But uh, I too am trying to represent a little bit in, in celebration of what's happening. I got my Howard University cap on. I did not attend, I'm not an alum, but I have been to many a homecoming at Howard, which is where I picked this up. So. Okay. So um, with that, I wanted to ensure that for those who don't know, Kim, can you tell us a little bit about your start in in house music or music in general? Because I know your roots are not in house music. And it's important to know that you are a Midwesterner. Yeah. Living in the UK. Yeah, I am a, a Midwesterner, from, originally from Gary, Indiana. I grew up on the same block as Steel Town Records, which was a label for the Jacksons. I um, uh, kind of, uh, well, in a way I did start in house, but I, I went to university. I went to Columbia and studied arts and entertainment, media management, because I wanted to, and uh, entertainment law. I wanted to learn how to read a contract. That was my main kind of thing. And also my mother said, you cannot sing unless you go to college. <laughs> Now, did you go to Columbia in Chicago? You I, went to I went to Mundelein first. Yeah. Okay. University up near me. And I ended up at Columbia. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's how that happened. Look, I'm a, I'm a graduate of Columbia College, 1988. <laughs> the arts, entertainment, media management program. That was the bomb. Great program. Great program. Great we had all the heavy hitters in the industry at our disposal to learn. Right. It was it was amazing. It was like all my spirit animals all around me. I'm like, why didn't I discover this earlier? Linda so, Mint yeah. was um, like one of my teachers for law. Yes. yes. Um, a Chuck Suber who had oh, uh, yeah. at the time. I did every internship that came up on that internship board. Oh, yeah. um, so therefore, I ended up doing an intern at DJ International. I did an intern at Jam Productions. Jam Productions was a big uh, production company in Chicago. I, that I worked for them too. For the audience, in case y'all don't know, it was a big promotion yeah. company that promoted like a lot of the big concerts. I did like a radio station with Steve Dahl. Can you imagine? Steve Dahl, Disco Sucks, Steve Dahl. I was his like assistant. Um, 
Where where did I was Rachel screaming? Rachel had a club. I I was like trying to get as much information in before I went into uh, the industry because of so many of the women before me who may have not have had a choice and signed things and ended up being owned by the company or their properties owned for forever. And to say it happens anyway, eventually, but it doesn't start that way. You can make some prevention things and have enough information to even like um, sort of control your, your uh, what you sign or have a knowledge of it, what you're signing, because a lot of times the record industry will appoint a lawyer to you, which is their own, which is, you know, already the deck stack. So you're like, what's this? And it's like a book. So, you know, you have to kind of navigate yourself in Columbia College, which I see I have a sister from Columbia, was a, <laughs> was a really great place um, to go. Everything, And it was a smaller campus than it is now in Chicago. So we had maybe two, three buildings then. They've got about nine now although we're in COVID. So universities are online. I don't know what's happening like there now, but okay. So then I started my own label, uh, how I got. Uh, what's the name of the label? And the name of the label was called Police Records. This was started in 85 okay. with two partners, Dwayne Powell and Donnie Johnson. And that's who I put my first single on, Taste My Love, which yeah. was a calling card. We pressed 2000 copies. And um, amazing! Wow, going through this story, and then the the people who would come in to get export records from America to take mm -hmm. back to Europe picked up a copy of this record as well as the other uh, house records that was on Tracks Records label, which was a record yes. label by a guy named uh, Larry Sherman who did a lot of the early. I even did a, a, a internship there. That's another story. Um, but but it, he had like a lot of the artists like um, Marshall Jefferson's Move Your Body, The It, Donnie, uh, Don, uh, um, uh, Daryl Pandy, Love Can't Turn Around, Farley Jack, Master Funk, oh, and yes. all the early people. So I saw mm -hmm. that happening, put a small label together, put 2000 copy oh. together. It got picked up by DJs that came across the water, started being played. That's how that started. So Wow. Look at that. There's ah. a little bit of it. Oh yeah, that's the record. Taste my love. That was the, the police records, House to House. Even House to House, I came up with the name for that. That's amazing. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, the whole design of it, because I was learning yeah. from Columbia. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, just kind of put that together. And that was the first record um, that kicked things off. It got brought over to the UK. Unbeknownst to me, uh, was being played on we had what they had here called Pirate Radio. Yeah. Okay. One radio station that controlled the airwaves. There was, like, really no other station because of the state government station. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pirate radios were... But we didn't know. We were just young kids, so we knew we were on the radio in Europe. <laughs> so, girl, I'm on the radio, girl, go over there. But you That's know, all that mattered, right? Somebody yeah, that's playing the in, you know, and the people, you know, everything starts underground anyway. Yeah, any kind of music. So uh, that happened, and I think one some of the they had a tour out there when they came back. I saw the work permits and I asked if I could get the guy's name who was listed on there. I called the guy to see if maybe I could come to England, maybe, you know, naive. Oh, hi, this is Kim. Maybe I just want, I got a little record. Can I maybe come, you know, I see that you brought some of my other, you know, colleagues, the early pioneers over there, you know? Mm -hmm. Are you Kim Mazel that made the record Taste My Love? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, you got a number one record over here. And I was like, really? Oh, okay. But obviously the number one record was on the pirate. It was on the underground. But like I said, yeah. all that mattered. And it got me a ticket to uh, the UK to do a um, showcase. Can I ask a question, Kevin? Uh -huh. You said something that I've heard other people say, which is artists like you, and I, I heard Steve say this, I heard other people say this, you know, sort of when house music was kicking off and Europe was embracing it in a different way than we were embracing it in the United States. Like it was popular, it was played on the airwaves, you know, it was getting number one and two spots. You guys were surprised 
by the acceptance of what was happening here. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Bland was deep. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to feature your video. <laughs> That's okay. So, what, what do you think? What, why do you think that it was embraced over there more than it was embraced in the United States? And I know this is a question that's been asked before, but I don't think I've ever asked you the question. And I, I've, I certainly haven't heard a woman's point of view of like what was happening in Europe that wasn't happening in the United States. And how did that feel? Um, well, I was still in university, so I was pretty much a kid anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was still in school. So um, I didn't really take it on board um, as what was happening. But, you know, I kind of looked at it in similar ways. Because remember, I did an intern with Steve, uh, that guy at WLS. Steve uh, Dahl. Steve Dahl. Steve Dahl had done a movement, Disco Sucks. Oh, we all know about that. Remember, he blew up all disco records in the middle of uh, 1979. Because we talk they, about it a lot, Kim, because it, it was a defining moment. It was a defining moment where yeah. they were switching the genres of music to be played. House is the, the baby, as they say, of disco. Right. So disco, when disco phased out, they weren't going to just pick up house either. Because we were in 84, 83, all of it. It wasn't even a developed sound. You know, we were still shaping it. It was like in the gay clubs in the north side of Chicago mm -hmm. where we would go and play it on a cassette or on a reel to reel. A reel to reel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go to Ron Hardy or, mm -hmm. you know, different mm -hmm. places. And it was like, you know, a click, but people were watching because uh, people would take it to New York and different places. We weren't, you know, aware of, uh, aware of that. And we had the Hot Mix 5 that mm -hmm. played on local Chicago radio. So to us, it was kind of out there already, but you had to like sort of scuffle, find it, it, yeah. find yeah. it and, and, and then to find out that there was um, like uh, places like England playing the record, kind of played to the same uh, history of black artists and music having to go to Europe for me to uh, become something like uh, sort of like the lady that wore the bananas, <laughs> Josephine yeah, Baker. Josephine Baker, yeah. Josephine Baker had to go to Europe. Uh, Billie Holiday, Tina Turner, I can right. Tina Turner, you know, to be sort of like accepted and um, and and for their music to kind of to get played. Um, ours didn't have. I remember like actually even 30 years ago or more uh, playing it for someone and I didn't understand this then, but 35 years later I do. It was good, he knew of something about it, but he said to me, it's not ready yet. Come back in 30 years. Wow. So yeah, I, I this, wanna... was, this was a guy whose ears, you know, industry, a and high level, he said, it's not ready yet. I wanna... 30 years later is EDM. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, we we. Yeah, and this was for America. This was for America. This guy was talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to go to DJ and ask about your start as well, and and see if there are any parallels in terms of you know where you play. Uh, have you uh, played abroad, or are you primarily domestic? Have you even targeted the international scene? Can you talk a little bit about that? So I've played domestically. Um, I'm looking. Uh, I need. I, I'm looking forward to playing abroad. I am looking forward to that. But my beginnings weren't in house music. They were actually in the Steppers Arena. Oh, get it, get it, Lord, get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know that it was. <laughs> It was funny that um, in the Steppers Arena, I was they felt I was too young. I had a battle in both both arenas. Wow! Wow! Um, in the Steppers, the Steppers Arena, they said I was too young uh, to know what I knew or play, you know, for crowds 15, 20 years older than me. And in the House Arena, they said I wasn't organic because I, you know, didn't get to hear Ronnie and Frankie and and that kind of thing. So I had to battle you know, both ways. That's crazy. Yeah. 
Uh, I can hear that though. I, I can appreciate that. There's a certain purity in both of those yeah. movements. Like, trust me, I was yeah. I was stepping because I used to roller skate. So roller skate yeah. was like the, the mother of stepping, or maybe that's where I saw you that yeah. time. That's true. At Harvey Roller Rink, Lori. I was at all. Trust me, I was at somebody's <laughs> roller rink once a week, and then I started. <laughs> then I tried graduated to house music, so that was over. But we so were stepping and roller skating. But no, I get you because there's purists. You know, yes. in the black community, you yeah. know, you got to be kind of like part of the, especially that steppers crowd. They're purists. Oh. You know? Yeah. Yes. And and yes. People, forget it. Steppers are tough. They're tough people. They're very purists. And the thing is, like you said, you know, music is so interwoven in our lives and lifestyles, but house really formed and took root right in, in the 80s, the post disco yeah. demolition era. And so, yes, while there are purists out there, that it's a young genre for all practical purposes. And um, most people are coming into it with some other roots. So I've, you know, I've heard from you, DJ Steppers. Um, Kim, I think in reading a little bit and doing some research, you were uh, performing as a reggae artist. Can you, you know, talk a little bit about your roots and really oh, what was the pivot? I forgot all about this. See, so much stuff. That was while I was at Columbia to put myself through school. I was like singing wherever, but I was, yeah, that's true. I was doing, um, I was singing in a live reggae band with dreadlocks and everything. Um, oh God, what was the name of that band? To perform at the Wow Hair. Yeah. Friday. Wow. Thinking Armadillo. That was the name of that place. And yeah. I worked with a group called Dalau, uh, which was an Ethiopian um, West Indian Jamaican group. I worked with um, like a lot of those different groups that came there. I worked with Debbie DeFire. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, Donnie Johnson, Seal Johnson, uh, Selena Johnson's father. He was somewhere on the side of that, like blues, because I was just trying to find a voice and a place where I could be in front of an audience and understand how, you know, to do that. So I like work with uh, uh, Barbara LaShore at the Blues Club on Halston Street at uh, Kingston Mines. Mm -hmm. I do like, you know, come up and sing a little bit just to, for, for the nerves because it, it was so weird. There were some places I wasn't brought up through the church. Okay, I'm sorry, whatever. I know they got the whole thing. All black singers came up singing in church. Gospel. That's not true. That's not true. I, I mean, I did sing a little bit, maybe from five or six, but it was, I don't know. It just. That wasn't um, you. That's okay. It, yeah. So, you know, and it was later on um, that um, I, I just, when I got to Chicago with so many live music places and it was just buzzing. So while I was at Columbia mm -hmm. and crafting uh, music, because while I was singing at these play places, I was, like I said, working at DJ International and um, helping to like form with House and meeting uh, Marshall Jefferson, going to the West Side to his little, ooh, that place there, that flat boy. We were not <laughs> tweaking and everything. It was, everybody was, um, like uh, coming through their chippy and uh, she's, all she's the, writing, you're writing a book for us right now. Like, I just want to unpack every little thing that you're saying. Every because album, it's like, every, there's we're so here many for nuggets. What was Marshall Jefferson doing on the thing. West Side? And what was the little thing? And who was twisting the knobs? <laughs> what's going on? It's, it's a, girl, I, I can't take notes. I'm glad we're taping this. I'm just going piggly piggly because as you're talking and I'm half asleep, I'm visualizing like, you know, taking the bus That's there. Great. Station there, um, getting the tape to Farley, um, you know, different things. It. People seeing something in me saying, "Is something in you here? Go to uh, this person and try this." You know, I even ended up singing backing vocals for Ariel Speedwagging with wow. Shay Jones. Anybody remember? No, Shay Jones yeah. over there. Oh my she goodness! Was on the road with her, she said, "You're gonna learn how to sing in front of a crowd of sixty thousand people." I was like, "I am." <laughs> yeah, uh, she's like, "Yep, yeah, we're going on the road." I was like, "Okay," and she had talked them into taking me. I and we were like on this tour bus in the dark, and I'm trying to. I could put my makeup on full face in the dark to this day. That's a I, skill. That's a skill. Skill. It could be a. Most people can't do that. 
I know a lot of, a lot of transgender uh, performers do it really well, but not too many women. You know, like you got like these guys, these these women who are like, I've done a lot of shows and they can do that makeup anywhere. I'm like, man, you got to teach me that skill because I can't do it. Yeah, well, I, I learned guess if you're on the road long enough, you'll figure it out, huh? You'll figure it out. And then when you get there, you know, you kind of move like where it went. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we did go herb. But yeah, those are like some of the some of the background memories of doing different um, right. just trying to 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 feel comfortable with singing in front of an audience and knowing that this was my path. I knew it from Gary. I knew it from you know watching Michael Jackson as a little boy down the street from wow. me. And wow. and seeing Michael leave from down the street and going into the TV. That's how I, I just went. And in my mind somewhere, I thought if he could go from just I there into a TV, I could yeah. too. You know, you don't have the words to kind of figure out mm -hmm. how to say this as a kid, but you all of a sudden, this kid you see been hearing and you know, you hear the guitar plug up for for Sundays and Saturdays, mm -hmm. and then he's Last on time. and he's in your TV. If, you know, you're like- If you can see it, you can be it. You right? know, that's right. not a language for any of that, but you know, I think it really, Michael really, Planted a seed. Um, uh, the Jacksons did big time. And, That's amazing. Uh, you know, really, they did. They and did. and so one of the beauties of tonight's show is it's uh, cross generational, and um, you know we've got an artist and a DJ. So uh, we need one, one of the terms you used, uh, Kim, was you said you grafted music together, and we've heard uh, DJ sh share that she started out in. Uh, you know, the steppers genre. Can you talk about what that either transition was like or what the overlap lap looked like and felt like? Were you blend <laughs> blending these crowds and audiences together at some point or did you just make the cut? Um, yeah, because I was doing mobile parties mm -hmm. as well. I, you know, more than just stepper sets, I was doing mobile parties, I was doing uh, wedding receptions and all that. And, you know, when you do those kinds of parties, you got to play right. all genres. So I, there was a point in time during those sets that, you know, there would be a house component to it. So real quick, you know, jazz during dinner and steppers and then a little house mm -hmm. segment and slide, whatever. So I've always played house music, but just not totally, you know. Uh, it's always been other stuff mixed into it. So um, I stopped spending for a short time and went back to school and had my son and that kind of thing. When I came back to spinning again, um, I encountered uh, uh, a number of people who uh, played house exclusively. You know, being around them and hanging with them and everything, you know, I was like, you know, this I really like this. I might try to do a little bit more of this. And um, the first person that you know, kind of put me around a little bit mellow. Let me play anything. Derek Smoking Jones, let me play anything, uh, you know, and that kind of thing. So um, I started leaning more toward doing house. So it was like an evolution. Uh, I didn't just jump, you know, feet first into all house music. It was like an evolution uh, to get to this point. And an and evolution that has uh, it continued. I mean, you're on this uh trajectory that is powerful and um one of the reasons we had you on tonight is because we know we're going to hear a lot more from you uh over time and the thing that you're doing on saturday night can you talk a little bit more about that and how people can tune in and check it out sure that's um uh, back to back saturdays myself and dj box uh, we started, you know, doing this internet show when we had to find a new normal. So we are on my Twitch page. Uh, you can find me. The spelling is just like my name, DJ Alicia, D-E-J-A-Y-A-L-I-C-I-A. -E uh, and uh, we're on there. I start at 730. And then uh, the shenanigans just rolls from there. I, one time we, I think we ended the show and it was like 730 in the morning. Wow. Y'all, y'all are late. <laughs> so we've recently we've started doing like battles. We'll have battle. We had a steppers battle. We had a JB's battle because Lori, both of us skaters, you know. Both wow. We What's had up? a BMX hey, battle. B. Right. We had a BMX battle. We had Scott Smoker Seals come on. 
up and, and talk to us about BMX and all that stuff like that. So we're trying to evolve, keep it evolving and, you know, keep it exciting for the people at yeah. home. It's like we and we've got a like a a regular crowd now that say like, OK, it's time for the show. Wow. I love that. Congratulations. That's me. You. you know, you know, when you describe your style, I think we're moving more towards this. And this, I think this is something for both you and Kim is that we, you know, we, we, uh, we start to get into this only house music groove, which is fine because it emulates what we, what we learned early on with the warehouse and the power plant, these, these places, but there was a whole like movement, I think, and especially in the nineties where you had a whole lot more open format DJs. And I, I think, you know, um, was it all it was, was one of those like crossover songs. You know what I'm saying? It was one of those songs, like as a DJ, let me just tell you how, how I would do it. Gene I know you can relate to that. Who's version yeah, Gene Kern. Kern. Or Kim yeah. Mazzell. I like both of them. But, uh, <laughs> but what I'm saying is it's the tempo. The, the tempo of it is about the ability to, to do this crossover. And so I'm, I mentioned that because I know that's one of your tracks. But it reminds me of uh, like how you would move from a stepper, a stepper set into sort of this intermediate thing into this house. And it's about tempo. It's about flow. It's about sort of combining audiences. And we don't do that as much anymore. Everything is 125 beats a minute, 123 beats a minute. And that party stays there all night, which is OK. But I do think we've lost something. And I feel like the 90s was where we had more experimentation with that. We were more open for that. I mean, what do you, what do you think, Kim? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And that 125 BPM is crazy. I did a show like like last year somewhere. And I I, I mean, my track, I, it was, I was like, who's that on my track? <laughs> I was just, you know, it's, it's, right. it's a bit, uh, it was a bit much for me. And they just kept it there. And they kept, and they took it up to like 130 to where it almost slows down. They kept going so fast, I could almost do it in half time. I was like, wow, it was just kind of weird. But I think the 90s, we kind of had a bit more, like you said, we had more of a selection. We had more of a soulful yes. house. House was more, really more soulful. It was, yes. I don't know, some people says it was it was pop, but I think it was more soulful. I mean, my version of, of Was It All It Was, I did with Marshall Jefferson, but David Morales um, mm -hmm. remixed it. Yes. He did the remixes for me and... Uh, Someone else did those remixes and I can't since the music factory or somebody, but it just fits. And they would, they would meet the two of them, mine, Miss Carnes on the dance floor. And they just, would that's what I'm saying. I, it was a perfect intermediary. And, and I, I almost feel like we don't have the patience for that anymore. I don't know. I, DJ, you, you, you are, you know, you do open format. You've, you've done that. I mean, what, what, why am I, I doing do. that? <laughs> I do. And it, but you know, I think that's one of the reasons why I partnered with Box. Okay. Because Box is a very uh, versatile DJ, and he takes me places. You know, I'll get stuck in. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I like Afro. I like up tempo stuff like that. And uh, people don't want to be beat to death like that. All oh, you know what I mean? You need, you need a nice ebb and flow to it. So that's why. I, I chose him to partner with and we got together and everything because box will break it all the way down box. I'll be spending my set and box to come on and break it all the way down to 117. You know, I love it. I love it. The group. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta have courage to do that though. Yeah, you, you, do you, do you, gotta have, our age. <laughs> you gotta have a balance oh, as well. It's you gotta have a balance as well. You know yeah. what I mean? And I it's think that, um, I got stuck at that 125 uh, point because of where I am, like where yeah. you're situated at the party. Um, a lot of times I will open and I will, you know, bring mm -hmm. it up to open it. You take them on the journey. Right. You don't want to jump in there with both, you know, uh, uh, and yeah. get hot for, the, for the bartenders or whatever, you know. <laughs> so it's an art to open it and ollie open it to Absolutely. the middle or the headliner, or whatever. And a lot of people don't understand that. But then when my time slot changed, I think I got locked into, you know, right. okay, I got to come in here and I got to, uh, you know, you like lock the whole time. Right. Yeah. So it kind of took me out of that flow. So I'm really enjoying yeah. um, freedom of, of being able to do, you know, play how I want. Yeah. 
Like, it would be difficult to go back where you have a crowd in a venue or a promoter who has expectations. What do you think? No, because I feed off energy. Like I when I'm playing live, I feed off the energy of the crowd. Like they, you know, they, they tell you what you, they tell you what's working, right? They, do. they tell you what's working and what's not working. So mm -hmm. yeah, and I learned that when you play outside of your comfort zone, like I went to Detroit. And I went in there with guns blazing, and yeah. then ten minutes into the set, everybody was kind of just, you know, looking. And I had to switch gears. Yes. You know, what I mean? okay, they don't, they, they like more of a soulful crowd. They want to, you know. So I had to. You, you got to be able to do that. Got to read. Yeah, reading the crowd. There's nothing like it, and certainly comments and emoticons and all those type of things help in this online virtual world. But there's nothing like the energy of the crowd, both nothing performing like the energy of the crowd, as a DJ or a singer. I can imagine. Can I ask I Alicia a quick question about? She was just saying she did. You did a performance, and it was uh, in a baseball field. Yes. Recent was that? Re that was recently during the COVID. That's that was a, that was a, a venue that, that was they this past this past Saturday. What? What can I can I ask? What was that like? Because that sounds like a great alternative idea for spacing out. it was it was amazing like um while while on the baseball field and everything was opened up you know people you know some people had on masks some people didn't because it was social everybody was socially yeah. distant yeah. but like when you went to go get a drink or whatever and it was you're going to be in close proximity to people put your mask on go get your cocktail or whatever the djs had a a, a back like a almost like a backstage area they had mm -hmm. to listen I actually had to climb up a ladder to get <laughs> to get to where the DJ portion That's, was. I love that. Don't you? Love it? <laughs> That's really I that feel on a whole nother level. And, and the I sound, love that shit. The sound system. It was dope. It was dope. Like I, the, I DJ place where you got to climb up a ladder. I love that. I know, right? I know. We had we had Bert Blanchard on from the shelter, and he he talked about his experiences where he was able to keep some of the suburbanites at bay is, is what he shared. Um, it's a balance, you know? It was a, a nested DJ booth. But it, it, it's a balance. You got you want to read people's energy, but you also want to have a space to do your thing, right? It's DJ? more. Yeah. Exactly. I don't come in McDonald's about. helping you flip burgers as they Ooh, used to say in the comedy joint. <laughs> Let me do my job. Damn it. <laughs> You're right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I want to um, shift gears and talk about the process of making music, right? So we've talked about playing and a little bit about the origins. Let's talk about um, releases because both of you have had a chance. Um, Kim, you've got, I mean, you're a performing artist, so you have a pretty extensive discography. And uh, Alicia, you have made great inroads as well with your uh, co-collaborator, another friend of the Vintage House show, uh, Black Widow. So talk a little bit about, you know, the why of, of making music. I mean, we know you perform because it's in your heart, but talk about you know, this recording process. Kim, you want to go first? No, let Alicia go first. Let DJ Alicia go first. <laughs> I always go first. Um, go first. You so go first. The, the making music part was kind of an accident at first. I needed to, I was doing a set, I was doing a birthday set. Terry Hunter um, had me come down to the shrine to, to spend on my birthday and I needed something exciting for the crowd. And uh, the Black Widow was there. We were, you know, uh, sitting around drinking some wine and everything. And I was looking for some inspiration. And I said, man, remember that piece you did at the poetry center? And she said, yeah, she think I could record that for for the, the uh, performance tomorrow? Yeah, so she did that. Uh, I took a track and looped it and did a couple things to it and everything. But it, it went over so well that after that night, I sent it. Mike. And when I sent it to him, I said, man, can you add some flavor to it and make it sound like your stuff does? When I say Mike, I mean Mike Dunn. Um, and, Friend of Vintage House Show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and I was at Reynolds and I'm just standing there and he gets on the microphone and he's like, brand new music coming out. 
DJ Alicia, uh, Black Widow, and he plays this orchestra that he put together. <laughs> wow. I love it. Man. Nothing like, you know what I mean? When I put together, like, and when people put together, it's like, boom, boom, like, you know, wow. like, that. but after that point, I wanted to try my hand at making some music and, you know, again, the Black Widow provided vocals on Groove Me and sent that to Mike. Mike did it. And as a matter of fact, I'm in the studio right now. I had to take a break. Let me swing y'all around this way. What's what? up? Eric, welcome. <laughs> immaculate. So, What's up? Surprise. <laughs> so, so we actually, I'm working on something right now, and I was like, do you mind if I do the interview from your <laughs> That's amazing. Look, Immaculate is a hard person to catch up with. So you got to get them when you can. I know. And immaculate got hit swinging out the door, you know, daily. So I was like, I didn't want to miss my appointment. I was like, take my laptop. <laughs> love it. That's we good. Love it. This is that's um, fantastic. The vibe of the minute couch show. So for those of you who don't tune in every Wednesday night, you see what you're missing. Be with us. You never know April, who's going to show up. Three a.m. in the UK. <laughs> so we want a, an exclusive of the release on the vintage house show. Yeah, uh, Immaculate and Byron Stingley did drop that uh, that fire Carla Prather song oh, on yeah. the Vintage House show right here. Yeah, and Byron's right. got a new, um, they're putting together a new 10 City album at the moment, too. Right now. Yeah, they, yeah. yes, they are. Yeah, we're I gonna be wrestling for that one. It sounds real good. I said, Byron, it sounds real good. So, Kim, tell us, oh, before you do, I've got a uh, DJ Alicia. Yes. Somebody got a, a question statement. <laughs> I haven't answered asked my questions yet. Now the groove me. Go for it. I got ten minutes. You gotta let me get something in. <laughs> okay. So all right, I have you know DJ Alicia was last on my, on a show that I host, Vintage House, my my show, not the mega show. Mega, you know, we all in it together, but. <laughs> Anyway, she was on the show in December of 2019 where we had a little we had a little tag team with Nikki. We had a little fun. That was a really, really, really great night. But I just had this one question. And it was something that, that, that you said that night that, that really that I feel like we didn't explore enough of. And it was about like the pros and cons of belonging to the group. And you are, you know. When you collaborate with folks, there are pros and cons to it, obviously. You're in mm -hmm. Ascension. Ascension is this amazing collective of DJs. I love seeing your post. I love seeing like the travel. I'm so jealous. They're like on an island and on a boat and they're DJing and they got t shirts. And it's just like yeah, a big old boat. Right now. <laughs> let me see. Let me see your t shirt. My t shirt. I like that t shirt. I like Lori's t shirt. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, that's you know, that's just that's who we are, right? But uh, <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, like, what are the pros and cons of belonging to such a big DJ group? Okay, let's let's go. Let's start from the beginning. I am not in Ascension. I thought you were. I am not. <laughs> what the heck? So Ascension just happens to be like my my bestest friends. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, those so are my best friends. Like, those are all we hang. We call each other squad. You know, it's just like a little nickname we have for each other, squad or whatever. It's like Fifty Mills, me, Jesus Martinez, G Whip, yeah, yes. and we just like friends. We don't, you know. Don't, now, okay. That the group that I am, I am trying to uh, collectively put together will be the Vortex DJs. Got it. Okay. Okay. So the yeah, so the Vortex DJs also are just my friends. Like when I decided to do the internet radio show, the marathon, I said, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, I need people that I can get along with. I it's no uh chiefs, all Indian. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody, it's all love. I you know. No cons. Yeah. All pros. <laughs> I imagine it's, it's something yeah, that I, so. I kind of wanted to do, but I never really had a chance to join a, 
Although I don't know if 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 Celeste is still watching, but yesterday she said I could be. A, I'm just gonna say it. she said I could be an honorary honorary member of the hot mix, not the hot mix, the fabulous, fantastic four, five. Fantastic four. Back okay. in the eighties, you know. I said I would love that. What about Vertigo? You guys had Vertigo it. was sort of a DJ crew, but me yeah. and Craig were the only DJs. Does two people make a crew? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yes, they do. I love what you guys do. I just love it. I just, I just, well, even though you're not a part of that, I just love the right. camaraderie. Just, I love the brotherhood. I think that's why. It's just, I it's think just that's really why. Cool. We just, we just having fun. Be quiet, Lee. I see your comment. Lee always. <laughs> On everything. Look, Don't cry, my, tears are always, my tears are always happy tears. My tears are always happy tears. Now, if I'm happy, I'm not going to see too many tears. Nikki, <laughs> what's up, Nikki? Nikki? Nikki's in the Vortex. Nikki's a Vortex DJ. I welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. She was very excited about this show, too. She's like, yes, leading up to promoting tonight. So uh, let's spend a little time with Kim in that process. Uh, your discography is pretty extensive, Kim. Um, I want to, of course, I'll chime in a little bit about one of my favorites. It's, we'll talk about it in a sec. Uh oh, well, uh, well, you mean like some of the writing processes of some of the music or all, things? Is all that what the question every is? aspect. What is your favorite part? Are you uh, enjoying most the performing part, the writing piece, the recording? I like I like all of it. It just it depends on the moment. You know, writing is magical and certain things happen when all of the celestial beings are lined together. And I'm saying that just to lead into how uh, I ended up writing Missing You with Jazzy B and Soul to Soul and how that happened. I was just doing a performance in London somewhere. I think I was promoting uh, Useless, which is a track that I did with Marsha Jefferson. And I was promoting that and uh, finishing up a show about three, four o'clock in the morning. And Jazzy and Nellie Hooper were at the gig, had me on my shoulder and said, um, I want you to come to the studio and blow a tune. So I was like, oh, okay, but who are you? And like, well, I, I, Soul to Soul wasn't really, really, um, they were out there in America because they had done Back to Life and this and that, but I didn't. I wasn't aware. I was on my own album uh, trip and doing my stuff. And he called me and asked me, uh, he came to the, to the gig and asked me to come to the studio with him. And I went with them and it was about 4 o'clock, 4.30, we got to the studio and he started playing this track. And I was like, wow. You know, um, you're the sweetest. I can't sing, it's five o'clock in the morning here. So anyway, I was just like, okay. And I just started writing that. And that process was so magical that the music, the words, the connection, everything came together at once. I went in the studio, sang down the track one time. And this is the first time I ever did that. One time. And it kind of came off the dome. And we did punch, did some little punch in tricks. And, and that record came out and it was the follow up to um uh to uh what Karen had done with Soul to Soul. So it was the it was like a top ten hit or around the world 1990, a new decade album. And talking about having magical elements at once in in, in a room. That night in the studio, Nelly was remixing Ghetto Heaven in one room, which was with the family Stan and and uh Sandra uh St. Victor, girlfriend of mine. And in the other room he was doing that Remix for Nothing Compares to You for Sinead O'Connor, one that started off really slow. So all three of those things were going on in the studio at one at one time. So for me, um, writing can be anywhere from those type of elements coming yeah. together or just sometimes sitting in a club and you think you hear something on uh, from a track of DJ's playing and you just groove it and you go in the bathroom. I used to go in the bathroom while I get toilet paper and start writing on it. That this is a trick and a tip. <laughs> you know, it just be all kind of different things to just um waking up in the middle of the night with the um and I still have one of these. This is where is it? Okay. Oh, I don't know if it's here. But anyway, waking the up with or pad. I used to have like no, I used to sleep with my cassette dictaphone. Oh one of your micro recorders, yes. For years. Um I just sleep with it because I would just wake up with ideas. For years, I mean, I, I I didn't have boyfriends. I had my cassette. It had its own pillow. 
And so That's your pillow talk was really authoring, was really you know, composing lyrics. Right? With cassettes, and I even have cassettes on me right now I'm still, because I'm taking things off cassette at the moment and putting it on waves. So I've got loads of that stuff just sitting right here. Oh, here it is. This is crazy. Hi, yeah. love nice. So, so one day we're going to um, ask for you to donate that to the Dance Music Research and Archiving Foundation. Oh, that's right. As we create uh, museum exhibits of the oh. history of house music. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's just so many processes. Like, like even now I'm like, I'm loving Alicia that she's just sitting there in the cut and I'm like, oh, she's in her little office room. She goes, no, if I'm in the studio right now, I got some time. <laughs> and I'm in here just going to put some stuff together. I love you for that. I feel that. Absolutely. Always work the creative um, spirit and energy to your point. Yeah. Always going. It's, it's just always it's right. going on. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Lori? What'd you say? Oh, I thought you were, you got I just say you gotta do it, you gotta work. You know, this is, yeah. a, this is a field where you have to work. So, you know, if, if you're trying to stay relevant to yourself and to the community that you're trying to serve, you can't let up. Uh, and that's, you know, people like Jay Alicia and, and Kim Mazel, you know this all too well, is that when you, when you slow down, you know, the biggest disappointment is just to yourself, it's not to your fans. You know, because because this is what feeds you, right? It's true, and 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 it and it feeds them as well. And obviously, especially in Europe, they like the classics. Uh, they're really? very loyal. They're very loyal over here. You don't need to be making all these new whatever. They want to hear what they know you for. Um, they want to see you. Um, they want to see you. They're 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 like so loyal. Like say if. Even if something happened to you and you're one day and you just looking crazy, but if you can get yourself together enough to get there, they appreciate the effort of seeing you because you remind them of maybe the best years of their lives when they were raving somewhere. Maybe they were in Ibiza in the 90s when you were there like in the night because we've been going to Ibiza. I've been going to Ibiza since 89. Wow. So, wow. you know, yeah, I lived there for like five years. It's like, wow. you know. So it's um, you, people have taken the journey with you and they want to see you. They're like, because it's you love. And then and, and you stay in good shape. It helps them like relive all that stuff. You have no idea how many times I was on the dance floor, Kim, with your music, you know, here, there, everywhere. So it's a very loyal group of people. That's why a lot of artists like from America, like like um, CC Pennison and Robin S and a lot of them come over here constantly and they want to hear that song that one song they that's that's what they I want to hear. It. so it, it's really and once you build your and alicia probably can contest to this too once you have your audience and your niche you can keep working that it's like a boutique uh, shop where you have your customers or your clients that you've built over well with me over 30 years um and they come for um, you know, different things. They want to hear the original stuff. Yeah, they want to hear something new too. Like, and unlike right now, because of COVID and certain things, I've had the opportunity to do in my living room um, unreleased recordings that I've recorded over the years that the record company didn't release or bad management just couldn't get it in the door because they would just whatever. Some of the stories I go through. And then I'll do the song. I'll play the song, do a little miming, do a little singing, and I just call it a demo series, lockdown demo series. And I get up and perform it. And the and there and now they want me to release the album of the yeah. uh, you know. So it just grows, you know. And then you know I'm doing like a podcast. Yes, I must plug my podcast, on Spotify, okay. and it's called Young Hearts Run Free, which um, is you know because I was able to record that song for the movie Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Which would be a Grammy, my second Grammy nomination. So um so yeah, so you guys if you're able to tune into that podcast, it is on Spotify or Google or all these other outlets that Spotify uh I, I mean that podcast come on and that Mazel Young Hearts Run Free. So you know tune in. It ain't it's not too 
long because you know everybody doesn't have a long attention span, especially me. So I talk about two parts, ten minutes. <laughs> we talk about it real hot. You can leave a message, and I'll answer you the yeah. next time coming out. But, so um, I just had up a uh, uh, image of you and some of the early uh, releases, and I indicated I was going to share my favorite song, "Love Strain." Which was oh, that was that's so, a song, baby. I, is, I wrote that. I know you did, and um, I think one of the I mean, besides it being just a groove, right? Um, the affinity for it has to do with when I first met you was at New Music Seminar in New York City. There was a, an after party or something. Love Strain had come out. I think they were working the song and it was like a bowling alley party. And one of my buddies, Hakeem uh, Abdal Halak from uh, Boston said, here, come here, I want you to meet someone. And he introduced me to you. And I have this photo, but no. I cannot find this photo. Good, don't, 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 don't shock me. You know, it's, it's a totally, it's, <laughs> Wait. No, the photo is that you posed with me because I was so enamored that I had met Kim Mazel, the performer of Love Strain. So that's my Kim story. Oh, wow. Love Strain, Love Strain. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's wrong. Ah. <laughs> that's, that's so sassy. Oh, my God. That song is so sassy. <sighs> love I that remember. song. Oh, and my God. I want that about Gavin Christopher. Gavin Christopher? Yeah, I wrote that song about Gavin. I wrote a lot of songs about Gavin. I think I was dating Gavin at the time. I wrote oh, wow. Okay. Good yeah. to know. Yeah, Good a little background story. Rest in peace, Gavin. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we are rounding out, um, you know, the hour. We uh, normally try to get it all in, to your point earlier about people having <laughs> short attention spans. Um, but it's not every day that our Vintage House show includes um, two fabulous women um, that are our guests. Of course, I co-host with two fabulous women, Lori Branch and Lauren Lowry. And um, you, Kim, are coming to us from across the pond where it is now 4 a.m. It's 4 in the morning and I've got to do a TV show at 6. Wow. And, I, and, I'm, and it's live. Uh, British breakfast live. And I'm like, I got, I got, I was like, I'm, I'm going to try to stay as long as I can. And, um, well, you, you it's have... an honor to be with a female DJ as well. Two, yeah. two, two, two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Go back to a little story too. Early days when I, you know, done taste my love and stuff, used to go to New York to do that song and sing that song live. Me and, and, um, you used to hold me. Uh, I mean, no, Xavier Gold, Xavier Gold. Xavier right? Gold. Me and Xavier used to go like once a month to New York. I do Taste My Love. She do used to hold me. And, you know, Xavier was an early, uh, she was a DJ. Yeah. Um, I, she is now, but I mean, early on, she was DJing and learning to DJ. And I really admired that. And I wanted to pick it up, but I was on this other trail so fast. Yeah. Yeah have the opportunity to stop and you know and, and to do that so you ladies never too late never too late you could be a singing uh, i could be on the ones and twos absolutely and, 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 and see the thing about it was i liked vinyl i liked the spinning of vinyl not i i know that everybody's on uh, um some are just on laptops, press and play, and and then some are on uh, the CDs and mixing yeah, computer, it together. Computers. The vinyl, and that was something just I thought was really, really special. And uh, female DJs, yeah, I honor you guys because because that was not that's not an easy gig, you know, especially grafting and getting to where you are, you know, and. Uh, Back in the day, we had to walk with all those boxes of records. Oh yes, whatever. and it's a male-dominated industry, you know, as yeah. well as 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 I do. That sometimes, you know, you get elbowed, you used to get elbowed out. And even with me, with the DJ singing on the track, I'd get to some gigs, and the DJ, the the guy who I got the remix gig for for my record, wouldn't even want me to sing two bars on the mic at the show. I was like, you must be out your mind. <laughs> 
Well, you know, we're about to have a black female VP, so the whole game is going to change. Okay, ladies? Oh, that yeah. used to just uh, really upset me. I really did. I was like, I can't change the game. Mm, I, I know. That story's for other days, darling. Let me, I'm going to sip tea on that. Uh, I feel you. So, but question for you. you Pinky in or out with the tea in the UK? Tell us. It doesn't matter. What there's no etiquette associated with okay. no 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 it's not maybe maybe back in 1805 but like <laughs> so I don't want it to go unnoted that we had some breaking news here on the Vintage House show that you know we can expect some DJ sets from Kim Mazel and maybe she'll team up with Lori Brand yes. and DJ Alicia. I yes. like box I'm gonna do it. And I will promote that show. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm I'm here for that. Look at all that what that, all that wax uh, Lori has back the there. She, wow. Right. I got plenty see, of wax for you to play. You got some wax. Wow. Wow. Right. Well, you will not be the first person from uh, England in my basement. Because are you, are you I heard the interview down here. Huh? Sorry, are you in Chicago, Stateside? I'm in Chicago, yeah. Okay, when, when I come to visit my mom, I'm going to send Hello, you. Hello, girl. A come you. through. Yeah. I love um, it. Hello. You guys oh, stop by. <laughs> you guys stop by Mega's house, too. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I got a vinyl that. room. Mega, meet us at Lori's for, for tea, and you can hold your pinky up if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Very that's good. Right, that's right. You know, that's yeah. right. <laughs> and, and so, we got to have you both back. Alicia, are you in Detroit? We're, no, I'm in Chicago. Chicago. Oh! Chicago, Chicago. We are yeah. a Chicago yeah. podcast, but we're global. We are global. Okay, but well, well, we just all meet at Laura's because I'm looking all that's that right. Way. Yeah, I got, I got. It's a playground for DJ. Trust me. Yeah, it just looks have a lot like of fun. It. it just looks like it too. So I'm gonna have to um, love you and leave you. Uh, I wanted to stay for a few questions, but I, I need like one more hour of sleep before I have to do the Girl, next one. Put on lashes and all that stuff, but y'all, I was like, oh, I, 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 I was like, your Chicago, Gary, Midwest family are certainly I love you guys so much. I we just appreciate you, the audience, as well. I love you guys. Thanks for supporting me. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Alicia, and this, and, and Lori. Thank you guys for having me on. And I would only do it for homeschool people to be up at three o'clock in the morning trying to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to find this picture, frame it, and send it to you in the UK. You'll love That's it. That's right. Thank you, Cam. So, so much love, a appreciation, and respect. So Same. thanks, guys. Thank you very much. It's been an honor. Peace. Right. Hair grease. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye, Kim. D DJ, can you tell us as uh, we're wrapping up where again we can check you out and um, ensure that everyone knows how to stay connected to you? So we've got back to back Saturdays, and that's every single Saturday on my Twitch page. Um, I What's believe the Twitch handle? Twitch.tv forward slash DJ Alicia, D E E J A Y A L I C I A. All right. We've got the Vortex Marathon. We were supposed to have it tomorrow, but because of the storm, everybody's power got knocked out. And we wanted to make sure that, that everybody was able to tune in. So we pushed it to the 20th. So we go, we're going to be all day music, Vortex Marathon, Vortex Ooh. DJs on the 20th. I'm excited. That's kind of like my, my baby, the Vortex. So. I'm really excited about that. Yes, Darlene, Lady D. That's my Lady D and Lori Branch. Lady D, Lady D. Are my faves. Lady D oh, just did a, a stand on the Vince Adams show. Right? I'm like blushing now, blushing. I'm in the company with Lady D and DJ Alicia. Oh. And a very close friend of the Vintage House show as well. Oh, that's my girl. She was on my. earlier with Vince Adams. Really great yep. show. With her that cycle really bitch. It, it, that was yeah. really interesting. So you gotta watch yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we want to honor and thank you, 
DJ Alicia for joining us. Yes. Um, she's a three-peater, by the way, on the Ben and Chow show. Lori, you've uh, been able to yeah, get her. So <laughs> you're going to have to get, get some time in. That's right. DJ. So let me tell you, I think yeah. I've done something nobody else has done on Vintage House Radio. I actually, after I did my interview, myself and Miss Nikki, we actually interviewed Lori and she stayed and we interviewed Lori for like an hour. They, they, she they did, like did. A, I forgot about that. She yeah. did like an hour long interview. We were shooting questions at her like, what about this? Fun. And she stayed after the show in the hallway and we interviewed her for an entire hour. I love that. I forgot all She's about it. You know, story. they always do. <laughs> Two really cool things. I have to tell you, she's the only guest that ever bought me a present. It was a Christmas show. The first time she came on, she brought me this lovely Starbucks cup with the coffee and a gift card. I was like, what? I got to have her back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's kidding. why she's a three-peater. And <laughs> Baby D, uh, we love you back. We love you back. And appreciate that's right. you. Talitha, what's up? Hey, and, Talita. And so next week's show, we've got another fire show coming up. Uh, wow. Still locking in the guests. You know, these, you guys as artists and guests, we got to, you know, go through a lot to get you on, but it's always worth it. So it that's this You see, I broke up my whole right. studio session. <laughs> <laughs> He's very grateful. <laughs> We're great, very grateful. Yes. Eric, we're very grateful, yeah, Eric. Go do that spin one more time around the side. Right. Thank you for your patience, Immaculate. Look, I had to angle it so y'all could e. see him in the background. Right. Like, why is that? <laughs> so, I so, love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, so, right. doing well. Yep. Thank you. Love. Doing well, sir. Absolutely. Appreciate you. <laughs> Always. Appreciate you. So, Laura, you want to take us out? Well, listen, I just want to say thank you, DJ Alicia. You you are setting the bar so high for so many DJs in the field. Men, women, children, everybody who's coming up is going to be very lucky that they follow behind you. So I hope this is not the last time. There's going to be one more. You know, we'll do some more stuff when the studio opens up. And, uh, you know, just, just we just love hanging with you and we love you and we just appreciate you. And thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thank you for having me, and I am following your footsteps. So whatever they're getting from me, I got from you. So don't forget that either. Oh, get out of here. Blessing <laughs> and respect. We are the Vinny Show. Every Thank Wednesday you. Thank night, you. the Facebook page is Vintage House on WNUR 89.3 FM. Like us, love us, tune in next week. Till then. Be safe, be well. Go Kamala Harris, Biden Harris 2020. Don't forget the Vintage House Podcast, wherever your podcasts are. You can download the Vintage House Podcast. VintageHouseShow.com. That's right. Peace, bud. Peace. <laughs>